Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Muru Janjira Fort Located on a small island in the waters off western India's Maharashtra state, Muru Janjira is a historic sea fort that started out as a simple wooden fort built by some fishermen during the 15th century. During the 16th century, a group of people called the Cities, who are thought to descend from East African slaves, took over the site and built a stone citadel, which still stands to this day. For 500 years, the fort was unconquerable. In its heyday, it was one of the strongest marine forts in India, and the cities were able to fight the Mughals, Marathas, Portuguese, and the British. The sprawling 22-acre property consisted of 19 towers that were equipped with cannons, along with many smaller towers, or turrets, which were also mounted with weapons. Some of the weapons are still visible among the ruins, including three massive cannons. The fort had palaces, a mosque, and even freshwater lakes. Muru Janjira gained a reputation for being impenetrable, not only because it was impressively well-built, but because the cities were exceptionally skilled at diplomacy when it came to interacting with other groups. The fort was occupied until around four decades ago, with as many as 550 families living on the grounds at one point. The last family that lived in the fort was an uncle and his niece, who left when he died. Researchers are hoping that the great fort with its rich history will be preserved because as time goes by, its story is getting lost. Number 9. The World's Oldest War Memorial During the 3rd millennium BC, 30 bodies were laid to rest in a massive burial mound near the Euphrates River in what is now the Syrian town of Talbanat. Known as the White Monument, Researchers long believed that the human remains and grave goods belonged to enemy fighters of the people who buried them. But a closer look revealed that the individuals laid to rest were actually members of the local community and militia. Similar burials have been found throughout northern Syria, but the White Monument is distinct in several ways. Unlike the other mass graves, where the soldiers' bodies were thrown into a haphazard pile, the deceased were arranged in an organized fashion after being transported to the site from somewhere else. This was a sign of respect that was generally not afforded to enemy burials. The careful placement of the bodies indicates that the grave is a tribute to local fallen soldiers, making the 4,500-year-old site the world's oldest war memorial. It's unclear whether the individuals buried at the site were the losers or the winners in the battle that cost them their lives, but they were laid to rest with honor either way. These findings came to light when researchers re-examined the site, which was first excavated during the 1980s and 90s. The new information warrants a deeper investigation of other burial mounds throughout the region, in case previous studies missed important details that could change history. Number 8. Neapolis In 365 AD, a massive tsunami struck the North African coast in what is now Tunisia, wiping most of the Roman port city of Neapolis off the map. Modern historians know about the disaster based on the writings of a soldier and historian named Ammian Marcellin, who also noted that the tsunami wreaked havoc on the Greek island of Crete and the Egyptian city of Alexandria. This is one of very few mentionings of Neapolis in ancient texts. During the Third Punic War, which lasted from 149 to 146 BC, the city's people sided with Carthage rather than Rome. The Romans won the war and took control of the city. Its absence from historical records suggests that Neapolis was punished in some destructive way for supporting the enemy, leaving experts with little to learn from. Some of the settlement's ruins are buried beneath the modern-day city of Nabul, making them impossible to explore. In 2013, Archaeologists found some submerged ruins of part of the city that had been sucked beneath the waves during the tsunami. The discovery came after a storm ravaged the seabed, revealing man-made stone structures, including street signs and monuments. Included among the ruins were more than 100 containers that were used for making a popular ancient fish-based fermented condiment called garum, indicating that Neapolis specialized in its production. This alone suggests that the city was one of the Roman Empire's richest and most important commercial centers, and yet so little is known about it since it was shunned from the history books. Number 7. Sistine Chapel of the Ancients 
Around 12,000 years ago, or perhaps even earlier, some of the first people to live in what is now southeastern Colombia covered about an eight-mile stretch of cliffs with tens of thousands of paintings over many generations. The images mostly depict Ice Age beasts, including mastodons, giant sloths, camelids, and horses. There are also humanoid figures, hunting scenes, geometric shapes, and animals such as deer, alligators, bats, monkeys, turtles, and porcupines. Nicknamed the Sistine Chapel of the Ancients, the red ochre paintings have survived into modern times and comprise the largest collection of rock art in the Americas. Indigenous locals have long known about the images and consider them part of their heritage. Regional experts began studying the site decades ago. But the outside world first learned about the artwork in 2020, when the press mistakenly described it as a new discovery. Some of the murals are located so high up, their painters had to use special ladders. They were created by hunter-gatherers who survived on fish, reptiles, mammals, and fruit. Researchers are using the findings in their ongoing quest to determine who the Amazon's first settlers were. Sadly, they neglected to consult locals for their knowledge and insight on the paintings, leading to tension between the two groups. Number 6. The Lost City of Natunia Rabana Merkuli is an ancient stronghold that sits in a valley surrounded by mountains in Iraqi Kurdistan. Its history dates back to the Parthian Empire, which ruled from 247 BC to 224 AD. Archaeologists recently discovered intricately carved rock reliefs at the settlement's two entrances, depicting a ruler of the Parthian kingdom of Adiabene. Describing the artwork as ancient propaganda, lead study researcher Michael Brown told Life Science that the rare, life-sized monuments were meant to make a political statement. Experts believe that the site represents the lost city of Natunia, which was previously only known to exist based on some of its first-century coins that were discovered somewhere else. The reliefs on the entrances may depict the city's founder, Natunisar. Brown explained that Rabana Merkuli is the region's largest and most impressive Parthian site, and the only one bearing royal iconography, making it the best candidate for being Natunia. He said that the fortress likely played an important role in managing the Parthians' relations with other groups, including Rome, India, and China's Han Dynasty as a center of trade, diplomacy, and military force. There is little evidence of rebuilding at the fort, according to Brown, who estimates that it was used for no more than 100 years. The Parthians' reasons for abandoning it are a mystery. Number 5. Shimao For a long time, a series of rock walls on China's Loess Plateau were mistaken for being part of the Great Wall. It makes sense, since traces of the iconic structure run through the region. But researchers began to rethink this initial assessment when jade fragments and artifacts started turning up. The material wasn't used to build the Great Wall, and its nearest source was over 1,000 miles away, which means that the items had been brought there from somewhere else. Archaeologists excavated the site in recent years and found the ruins of a 4,300-year-old fortress city that thrived around a massive 230-foot-tall steppe pyramid that spans 59 acres at its base. Over six miles of protective walls surrounded the settlement, known as Shimao. The pyramid consisted of 11 levels that were each lined with stone. Its top level consisted of palaces where the city's rulers and elites lived. It's also where art and industrial production took place. Some of the most shocking evidence the team found came in the form of six pits filled with decapitated skulls indicating that human sacrifice took place at Shimao. Most of the sacrificial victims were young girls, who may have been taken prisoner as members of a rival group. The findings represent the first evidence of ritualistic human sacrifice in Chinese history. Shimao could perhaps be best described as a cultural enigma unlike any other ancient city ever found in China. As experts learn more about it, the discoveries have the potential to upend their understanding of the region's past. Number 4. Quinning During the 1960s, archaeologists discovered the ruins of a village hidden in the thick vegetation at South Africa's Suikers Bosrand National Park. It wasn't until 2012 that satellite images revealed that the settlement was much bigger than researchers had ever realized. 
In 2019, an aerial survey using LIDAR technology showed even more previously unknown structures, putting Quinning's size at three times bigger than was originally thought. People began settling at Quinning during the 15th century. It grew from there, and by the time the city reached its peak in 1820, it contained between 800 and 900 walled compounds, with each housing anywhere from a handful of families to many families. At the time, it was home to somewhere from 5,000 to 10,000 people. Researchers dated Quinning based on its architectural style, which resembles structures built by other early civilizations throughout southern Africa during the same period. Its inhabitants were from a group called the Tswana, who still live in the region. Because they have no written language, discoveries like this help to shed light on their history. Speaking with Live Science, archaeologist Karim Seder described Quinning as the largest of the known pre-colonial Tswana capitals. It was ultimately destroyed and abandoned sometime during the 19th century, most likely due to civil warfare. Number 3. Sahama Lines the largest archaeological site in the Andes is located in the western Bolivian highlands, where an ancient web-like network of pre-Hispanic linear paths occupy an 8,700 square mile area. They run a combined length of nearly 10,000 miles and take up three times as much space as the famed Nazca Lines. Known as the Sahama Lines, the paths may date as far back as 1000 BC and were created over many generations. They were constructed by scraping away the ground's surface rock, soil, and other material to reveal the lighter layers underneath. They traverse through rugged terrain, more or less in straight lines, with the longest lines measuring up to 12 and a half miles long. Experts know very little about the Sahama lines or the people who created them, who may have used them for navigation to sacred sites and villages that were located along the way during pilgrimages. The lines are dotted with the remains of shrines called wakas and burial towers called chulpas. During the early colonial period, the indigenous Aymara people used the Sahama lines to connect Catholic churches, shrines, and hilltop chapels. They also reused structures and artifacts that were left behind by the previous society. Some researchers even believe that the Sahama lines are still being used today, but there is no proof to support these claims. Number 2. Ancient Islamic Necropolis in Europe The Iberian Peninsula served as a frontier between warring Muslims and Christians during a bloody series of religious conflicts that marked the early medieval period, famously known as the Crusades. Muslim rulers conquered the area during the early 8th century, securing their victory by offering generous surrender terms to the population, who by then were fed up with the harsh conditions they endured under previous leadership. The new ruler, Amir Abd al-Rahman, established the Andalusian Umayyad dynasty in 756 AD, delivering a newfound stability to the region that its residents had never experienced. He brought an unprecedented level of power to Muslim rule by unifying the various Islamic groups that had conquered Spain. Over the next several centuries, the area became home to one of the greatest Islamic civilizations of all time. Christians retook the region in 1492 and erased nearly every trace of the cultures they conquered. Archaeological discoveries in recent years have revealed a much larger Muslim presence on the Iberian Peninsula than researchers previously thought. In 2010, a team in the Spanish town of Tauste unearthed over 400 ancient Islamic tombs containing at least 4,500 bodies on an ancient burial ground dating back to the 8th century. The remains show that the bodies buried were associated with Muslim funeral rituals and suggest the town was largely Islamic for centuries, despite there being no mention of this phase in local historic documents. History tends to be written by the victor, and we still have a lot to learn about what really went on in certain places and times. Number 1. Mardaman Archaeologists were digging among the remains of an ancient settlement in northern Iraq in 2018 when they unearthed a pottery vessel filled with 92 cuneiform tablets. It wasn't until they were deciphered by language expert Bettina Feist that they learned the 4,800-year-old city's name, Mardaman. The ruins indicate that the settlement was first established sometime between 2,800 BC and 2,650 BC, and it peaked between 1,900 BC and 1,700 BC. 
Even after its heyday, Mardaman continued to thrive until sometime between 911 BC to 612 BC. It was part of several large empires at various points and also functioned as an independent kingdom. The cuneiform tablets date back to around 1250 BC, when a governor named Assur-Nasir ruled the city as part of the Assyrian Empire. They contain details of Assur-Nasir's administrative and commercial affairs with the people of Mardama, according to excavation leader Peter Faltzner. The pottery vessel the tablets were found in was sealed with a thick layer of clay, indicating that residents may have purposely preserved them for posterity, perhaps at a time when Mardaman was under attack by another kingdom. Researchers know relatively little about the ancient city's rich history, but have found evidence that it was built and rebuilt numerous times before it was ultimately abandoned for unknown reasons. Thanks for watching! Hope you learned something new today! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon! Bye!